Okay, so this is lesson 16 that we're coming to now. It's called the preacher in the pulpit. Okay, and the verse that we're going to use for this is 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1 and verse 21. And it says, for since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. It pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. Okay, so there's no ministry that is more important than the preaching ministry. The preaching ministry is needed and necessary for one, the believer, of course, because this is the way the believer grows in their faith. They grow in maturity because the whole purpose and goal for the believer is to become like Christ. And if you go over into Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4, or chapter 4, verse 11 through 16, I believe it is, and it'll tell you why he gave the fivefold ministry. And that was for the edification of the believers, encouragement of the believers, the strengthening of the believers so they would mature. Um, that they would be able to be trained for ministry and also to protect them from false doctrine. So the teaching and preaching ministry does this for the believer, and so you can see the importance of that ministry uh, for Christians. But it's also important for the unbelievers because this is how we reach the unbeliever. This is how they come to the knowledge of God, the understanding of God. Uh, without the preaching of the word of God, they can have no knowledge of him except from his general revelation, which he gives through his creation. But as we preach, we give more details on who this God is and who Jesus Christ is and what Christ has done for them and their sinful condition, their need for salvation. So the preaching ministry is, is very, very important, okay? Um, now, again, uh, my professor had said this, this is the course that I'm taking from uh, William Say. He said, we want to lead people to worship through our preaching. So when we preach, we want to lead them into worship. And then he gives a definition of worship. And he said, what is worship? Worship is to quicken the conscience by the holiness of God, to feed the mind with the truth of God, and to purge the imagination by the beauty of God, to open up the heart to the love of God, and to devotion to the will of uh, to, to the will, to the purpose of God. So that's what he says worship is. And so we want to lead people into worship of God. We want to feed their minds with the truth of God. We want them to see and understand his holiness. We want to purge the imagination by the beauty of God and open up the heart to the love of God and devotion to the will and purpose of God. Okay, so this is our purpose really uh, when we preach. And what we have to realize is that the sermon is the center of the Christian worship center or service. Uh, so when we have our services, you know, we usually have a basic uh, outline of how we conduct our worship services. Um, we may have somebody who goes up, they open up with a prayer, they open up with a scripture, or you may have it where just your worship band opens up. Uh, they play a certain amount of songs, somebody comes up, may receive the offering, there may be another song sung, and then the preacher comes up and he preaches, okay? And so we have a few things that go on. We have prayer, we have worship that goes on, we have the offering that is given, but the most important part of the worship service is the Word of God, and people have to understand that. Uh, the worship service is not for entertainment. It's not just to come and have fun. It's not a recreation center. It's come to hear what God says in his truths and what it means to us and what we need to do, how we need to apply it, how we need to act on it, okay? It's to bring people to an understanding of who their God is, who Jesus Christ is, and get them closer to God, devoting themselves to God, understanding who God is, understanding his love for them, and for them to grow in their love for God, and to also grow into the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. And so the sermon's the center of the Christian worship, worship service. And so the preacher, it is necessary that he delivers what God says, okay? In other words, thus says the Lord, okay? We're not going up there to talk about the latest trends and things like this, what we read and all that. We may use certain things as examples, but the bottom line is, is that the message is the word of God. We're telling people what God says. We are his voice. We are his mouthpiece. We are his messengers, 
uh, proclaiming what he said, his truths. And we must understand that, okay? And we're not just up there as motivational speakers. We're not up there to make people feel good, just to get people jacked up. We have to give them biblical truths. We have to give them the word of God or else there is no spiritual growth, okay? They will not grow. They will not be equipped for what God calls them to. Okay, they'll get their high and, you know, get excited, but then they'll have to come back and get another shot of that again. Okay, because that wears out quickly. No, we have to preach the Word of God. It's the only thing that is lasting. Everything else will fade away. The flower will fade away. Everything will, but the Word of God lasts forever. Okay? And we have to remember that. So the pastor um, needs to preach the Word of God. And so we should also preach for a response. This is something that's necessary. We should expect people to respond to our, to our messages, okay? I and mean, again, that is when we give the appeal, the application, or a challenge, or whatever it is. They must act on the truths that were just given. It must bring about a change in their lives, okay? And this is the whole point of preaching. So we're going to talk right now about 10 characteristics of great preachers. And we're just going to go through these things um, kind of quickly, okay? We have a lot of things. If you go into your outline, you're going to see how much that we are going to be, be covering, okay? Again, this is Lesson 16, um, but then you can see even Lesson 17, we have a lot of points in that that we're going to be going through, but these messages will be a little more uh, brief, okay, in the points with not uh, so much explanation, okay? Okay, so 10 characteristics of a great preacher. Number one, they have an enormous capacity to relate to people. Okay, so he loves people. Um, he's not high-minded and he stays away. Okay, he loves people and is not high-minded staying away from the people. So he has an enormous capacity to relate to people. Okay, how can he, how, the way he can relate to them is by being around them and getting to know them. Okay. Um, you know, I've seen it so many times where pastors don't have any time with their people. Uh, they don't spend any time with them. They're, they're untouchable. It's like they just show up in the pulp and they escape through the back door and then you never see them again. And uh, they don't spend any time with the people. Uh, I experienced a lot of that. I used to see big evangelists coming into town and you know, we bring them in through the back door or, and then we, once they're done, we take them out the back door, they're gone. Yeah, we, you know, you pay them thousands of dollars, they show up, say their thing, and they're gone. Um, but then, you know, then I start seeing how the pastors will also adopt that same idea and that same thinking. You know, um, and the reason is, is that they don't want to bother with the people. They don't want to spend time uh, dealing with their problems, their issues, and things like this. But we can't help them unless we're also amongst them. There has to be relationships that are built. You as a pastor are are a shepherd to the peoples. Now, some of you who are tuning into this may not be pastors or called to pastors, but if you're called to any type of ministry, uh, whether it's children's ministry, adults, um, youth, uh, men's women groups, whatever it is, you need to relate to the people. You need to spend time with the people. This is really important. So you have to love the people. It is a ministry of love. It's a ministry of relationship. This is what the church is all about. All of us coming in relationship and growing together in Christ. And so there's no room to be high-minded, okay? Thinking you're better than anybody else. No, it doesn't matter what our position is, whether you're the pastor, the head pastor, or an associate, or a teacher in the church, a leader in the church, or on the board, or whatever it is. No, you still need to be with the people, this is all about relationship, and it's all about loving one another and helping each other grow in Christ. So if you're getting into ministry, this is something you need to do. You have, a, you have to have a capacity to relate to people and want to talk with people, get involved with people, spend time with them, okay? Second, um, their personality is pleasing. So he is pleasing in his mannerisms and dress. People feel comfortable with him. He looks at people as they talk to him, and he responds kindly to them. So there's all these things here, okay? You, you're gentle with people. You're patient with people. You have a good attitude, okay? Um, you're presentable to people. 
you're willing to talk, you're willing to embrace with them, and you allow people to feel comfortable with you, okay? And, um, and so this happens also as they get to know you, okay? Um, you know, because, you know, first impressions, they, they may have a certain impression about you, a wrong impression about you. Uh, I get that a lot too, uh, because, you know, myself, if I'm not talking with somebody, if I'm on my own, I usually have a serious look on my face. Uh, and some people think I'm mad or whatever. <laughs> I've heard this all my life, but it's just, that's, that's how I am. That's how, how I look. And so some people get, um, um, turned away by that and feel that I'm unapproachable. But if they talk to me, they find out what my personality is like, you know, that I'll talk to anybody that I'm friendly and, and things like this. So, you know, sometimes people will get a wrong idea of you, but you have to be one who is willing to spend time with people. You have a good personality. You're open to them. You want to spend time with them and you make them feel welcome. Okay. So you need a personality that is pleasing. And of course, even when you're dealing with issues with people and helping people, you know, you can't be too stern and everything. You got to be gentle. You got to be patient with people and loving. Okay. Uh, the third thing is they possess masterful preaching techniques. Okay. Uh, their voice, their gesture, their articulation are good. The people want to listen to him. He works not only on his sermon preparation, but also on himself as the instrument of this timely message. He works hard at his sermon preparations. He speaks as a professional, as a prophet of God. The people know that they've just heard from a man of God. So again, now I'm going to relate this to all of you who are listening, because again, not everybody is a pastor, okay? Uh, but you may be a Sunday school teacher. You may be one who preaches once in a while. You may be an evangelist, whatever it is, okay? But you're in a position where you teach people or preach. Now, you are going to develop certain techniques, okay? You're going to learn uh, how to speak. You're going to learn what type of speaker you are. Now, we're going to talk more about this in other lessons, um, but you're going to learn your, your voice techniques. What are you? What type of preacher are you? You know, you see, if you watch them, uh, you can just watch television. You can see different preachers. Some preachers, they, they're, they're very excitable. You'll see them running around, walking around, uh, you know, really raising their voices. Some are yelling, very excited, and, and that very charismatic in that. You'll see others, you know, the, you just behind the pulpit, they're calm, and they most, more talk in conversational style. There's others who are behind the pulpit, but yet they're still passionate. They show the passion, and they're excited about it, but they don't do much walking around. Um, so there's different styles. They speak in conversation styles. Some are more uh, yellers, more excitable. Uh, others will learn, you know, they'll be calm for a little bit and they'll just talk to the people, explain truths, but then those high points come and they get really excited. And then you got to discover what kind of preacher you are and what works for you. And here's one of the things that I'll tell you too, is that it's good to watch yourself. So if you're recording or something, record yourself and what you look like. Or if you speak in the church and it's recorded, watch it and see things where you need to change and work on that. Okay. And so one thing you want to do is, so you want to be, you know, they possess a masterful preaching technique. So you're going to want to work on your techniques so that you can present it. I'm a guy who likes to talk with his hands. I like to, you know, I don't really walk around much. You know, I would, but you know, with the way our cameras are, we use one camera. And so I don't like to move around too much because I don't want to have that camera guy having to move it all the time. So I kind of stay within the range of my pulpit. Okay. But I like to move my hands and stuff, but I'm passionate about what I teach because I believe what I teach. Okay. So there's time I get excited. There's time I, there's emotions that come up, you know, maybe I'll cry or something, you know, start crying, which I try not to do, but the Holy Spirit's moving. You're talking about what Christ did on the cross. It just happens that way, you know, but you're going to want to watch yourself. You don't want to just be a stiff behind the pulpit with your eyes in your paper and you're just reading your paper in a monotone voice because then nobody's going to listen to you, okay? And then they're not, you know, how are you going to get them to believe it? You got to show that you also believe it, this truth, and you should believe it or else you shouldn't be in the pulpit. <laughs> so it's got to touch you first, and then the way it touches you, you bring that out in your message, in your expression, okay? So these are things that we have to look for. This is how, you know, we become better preachers. 
And it's good to listen to yourself and to record yourself and to practice even at home. It may sound silly, but it's true. This is only this is how you get better. Anybody who works, you know, it doesn't matter what field, you know, they have to work on their craft to become better at it. The more you practice, the more you do it, the better you come at it. Okay? And then you find ways where it becomes easier. Okay, we we're talking about sermon preparation and outlines and all that. I mean, you can get real detailed on it and everything, but then you got to find a system that also works for you. Okay, so it's the same thing with even preaching. Okay, you have to come up into that pulpit too with confidence, not arrogant, but confident. You have to understand God's called me to bring this message to the people. So you need to come up there with confidence. Okay, we don't come up into the pulpit, you know, if we're a shy person, we don't come up there, shrug our shoulders, (laughs) start laughing like we're all uncomfortable, and uh, you know, and then. People are looking and wondering, well, <laughs> this person doesn't belong there. Uh, you know, it, and it's, they're not going to want to listen to you. So what you need to do is understand, look, at, if I have this opportunity to share the word and preach the word, that means that God has given me this opportunity. And now I am the mouth, mouthpiece of God. I am his representative. And so when I come into that pulpit, I come in there with that understanding. I am God's mouthpiece. I am his representative right now. And so I come up there with confidence. I come up there like I have a message, that I am the prophet of God in this moment. He has a word. And like I said, not arrogant, but confident that I have a message for you. And this truth is going to change your life type of thing. You need to hear this. You need to come up there with that kind of approach, okay? So you have to speak as a professional, as a prophet of God. The people know that they've just heard from a man of God, okay? Now the fourth thing is the preacher is to be undergirded with influential support. And then I want to put this along with number five, because number five says they live in an area of tremendous support from family and from congregation. So, you know, when we're in ministry, we need support, influential support, those from our peers, those who we look up to, we need them to help us and to support us. We need people also who we can go to and talk to if we have issues or if we need help in certain areas. And then we need people who are under us as well, holding us up and supporting us. You know, there's family, members in the congregation or whatever. There's people who fully back us up. Okay, so um, for myself, I'm a pastor. Uh, my wife, my wife fully supports me. My parents fully support me. My, my in-laws fully support me. You know, members, there's, you know, especially certain members that really support and hold you up, okay? So you need support. And so whatever ministry you're even going into, you still need that support. Uh, even if you're just teaching ministry, like children's or whatever it is, Uh, The same thing. You need support. You need to be able to come to your peers. You need to come to your leaders, and you need to be able to talk to them, your pastors and stuff like that. So you have to have support in those ministries, okay? Uh, Number six, because all of that is just going to help you be better, okay? Remember, these are things that we need to do to help us to become better. Number six, uh, they build an image of success, okay? Uh, Solid programming and solid reasoning behind every endeavor, okay? So everything that we do, okay, is focused on accomplishing the will of God and the purpose of God, okay? It's not basically, it's not just success where we grew the biggest church and we have the most money coming in. No, it's fulfilling what God has called us to do. Are we accomplishing our purpose, What has he called us to do in this ministry? What's he called us into this church? And so we need to have um, that image of success in the fact that we are showing that we can, where we can accomplish this task and fulfill this task. Okay. Number seven, uh, they will be capable of using all of their tools. Okay. So again, what are we talking about here? Ten characteristics of great preachers. Seven, they will be capable of using all of their tools, studying, sermonizing, preaching, and using several different methods of teaching. So you just don't always stick to one method. You know, I love expository preaching, but I don't just stick to expository preaching. I also do topical, textual sometimes, whatever sees fit and whatever, you know, the Lord leads me to preach. So if I do a series, 
say like Christ has made you free, you know, that's going to be more of a topical one. But then if he leads me to go through a book of the Bible, preaching the book of James, that's going to be an expository. Okay. So there's different, there's variety. So sometimes, you know, we go through books. Sometimes we just do on topics. Sometimes there's a single message. Just there's a message for that moment that needs to be preached. And we do that too. So we have to use our, our stools. We our tools. We have to be good at studying. We have to spend the time studying the Word of God. Okay? You have to. Uh, there's a lot of people who are lazy in their approach. And one of the things that they do is they just listen to somebody else's sermon, take notes on that sermon, and preach that. Okay? So in other words, they haven't done any work at all. They just copied somebody else's message, and they won't even mention that. They won't even give... Uh, recognition to that person. You know, I heard this message preached by this person, and so I thought, you know what, I wanted to come to you and preach that message today, because it hit, it was so powerful for me. How, how many of them ever do that? No, they all just steal messages from one another. They say, well, they got it from the Bible, so, you know, what's the difference? I've been in leadership conferences where I've heard the ones, uh, the speakers actually saying that. It's all from the Bible, so it doesn't matter if you take somebody else's sermon. You know, I don't think that's right. You're taking somebody else's work and you, now you're claiming it as your own. No, uh, God calls us to do our study and our work. Now, you can be influenced by what somebody else says. You can listen to a message and that message just strikes you. It starts a fire within you, gets you excited. And now it's like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go research that. I'm going to do my own study. I'm going to study that. And you may use some of what they say, but you're also, when you quote them, you're going to, you're going to use their name. You're going to say, you know, I got this from so-and-so, and they said this, okay? You're going to give credit where credit is due, okay? And then, but do your own research, too, and study, because you got to, because if you just copy somebody else's sermon, how do you know if everything they said is right? You've got to go and study it. All those cross-reference scriptures and that, did they, did they, did they do the proper study? Did they interpret them correctly? Or am I going to be parroting and repeating something that is error? You know, you, that's why you have to be careful. They, they said something that wasn't right. They interpreted that wrong. Now, if I just go copy their sermon, now I'm a parrot, which means I just repeat what they say, and I'm repeating that same error. Okay, why? Because I was lazy, and I didn't want to do any work. So you have to study, and you have to be willing to study. If you're going to be a good preacher, a good teacher, you have to be willing to put the hard work in. And like I said, use tools, use commentaries, use the Greek word study Bible, you know, all these things. Um, and, you know, take quotes for them. You can be inspired by their messages and stuff like that. But you still got to do your own hard work and study as well, okay? Don't be, don't be lazy in your sermon preparation because this is also how you grow and become better. Um, so studying, sermonizing, you know, keep practicing, putting your sermons together, find out what works to you, what method works for you, and that, and then once you get good at that, stick with that, and then preaching using several different things. So we'll be capable of using all of our tools, okay? And then, of course, working on our presentation and our speaking. Um, they are acquid, um, oh, sorry, they are avid readers, okay? Number eight, they are avid readers, okay? You're going to do a lot of reading, reading your Bible, reading commentaries, reading books, uh, lots of things like this, okay? So this is how you grow in your wisdom, your knowledge. This is how you learn from others, okay? And then number nine, they always present a positive and constructive outlook. They always present a positive and constructive outlook. He challenges people to live up to their best and he believes he's on the side of God, and therefore he can't lose, okay? So we don't come up into the pulpit with a defeated mindset, and we don't present to the people that we are a defeated people. No, we always have to be positive, that our God, you know, like a time that we're going through now with a pandemic and lockdowns and everything, we can't meet, we're not in our churches and stuff. So every time I'm on camera, am I going to whine and cry about that? Am I going to be down and discouraged about that? No, we can go through the media and we're going to proclaim this word throughout all the world and we're going to reach more people than we ever have. We're not going to let this bring us down. You know what I mean? You got to have that type of attitude. Okay, so 
positive and constructive outlook, okay? And you want to present that to people because you're the, if you're a leader of a ministry, they're looking to you. So if you're defeated, you're all messed up, it, that, that isn't going to fly. They're going to be wondering, oh, I'm supposed to follow this person? This person, they don't even have it together. They're falling apart. How can I follow this? I need to follow somebody who's strong, somebody who knows the word and knows how to stand on the word and, and do the word of God. Okay? Very important things. Number 10, they appeal for souls. Never forget about that. Okay? A good preacher, what are we talking about again? 10 characteristics of a great preacher. Number 10, they appeal for souls. Okay? This, this is important. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get people saved. And so even in our churches, when we're preaching, you know, you notice new people coming in. Hey, make sure there's an appeal for souls. Even sometimes they're longtime members. Hey, you know, maybe you got to make an appeal. You think they're saved, but maybe they're not really saved. Okay, but, and then you're on social media and stuff. Make sure there's an appeal for salvation because you never know who's listening. You never know what God is doing in their heart. So you make an appeal. This is what it's all about, winning souls, okay? So that was 10 characteristics of a great preacher. Now we're going to be the appearance of the preacher. Uh, a preacher is an ambassador for Christ, and they should not look like a bum. <laughs> he should be neat, clean, whether in the office, the pulpit, or visiting, okay? Now, this is going to de depend on your church, too. Okay, now nobody's going to look like a bum. Okay, that's, that's out of the question. Okay, that's not the goal. But there are some churches that are more casual and there are some that are more formal. And the formal ones, everybody's going to be in dress clothes. Everybody's going to be in a full suit, a dress and all this. More casual? Well, maybe they're wearing a shirt like what I'm wearing right now. Golf shirt, polo shirt. You know, maybe they got jeans on or dress pants and just a shirt like this. You know, they keep it real simple. Uh, they want people to feel more comfortable. And those who, who maybe are not well off, their circumstances aren't as good as what, you know, the next person's is, they feel comfortable in the church. They're not in a place surrounded by people in a bunch of suits, and all they can do is come in with shorts and, and a, and a t-shirt, okay? Um, you know, in, in our church, we're like a casual, casual dress, okay? Uh, we don't go formal, you know, but that's, that's choice, and it all depends on those churches, Okay, but, but whatever it is, you still need to be neat in appearance, clean, uh, whether in the office, the pulpit, or in visiting, because you are representing, representing Christ, okay? Um, dress appropriately for every occasion. The way you dress can speak more loudly than your words. You will get more respect and support. Dress well, and it will portray confidence, okay? So... You'll also notice that, you know, say, okay, like, say for pastors or whatever, um, if you go somewhere and that, and you're dressed in a, a suit or something or a casual dress, you get the blazer on, shirt underneath, dress pants and all, you look the part, you get more respect. If you just got t-shirt on and jeans and that, you don't seem to get the same respect. But when you dress up, you seem to get more respect from people. Um, you get more respect and support. Dress well, and it's going to portray confidence, okay? It's just the way it works. It shows confidence as well, okay? These are things that we may not normally really think about, but we do have to remember this. We are um, representing God, okay? Be aware of any of your bad mannerisms that you may have and try to correct them so they're not a distraction or annoying people. Scratching your head, rubbing your nose, clearing your throat, fiddling things, not looking at the people. You may be a gifted preacher, but these may ruin your audience, okay? So when you're in the, bat, when you're in the pulpit, you've got to get rid of the bad mannerisms. So what do you have? If you have change in your pocket, are you going to be sitting there jingling that change as you're preaching? Are you somebody, you know, you've got a ring on your finger and you're sitting there tapping the pulpit and it's making that banging sound, okay, from your ring. Um, are you going to be there rubbing your nose, scratching your head all the time when people are looking at you? Or are you going to be somebody who doesn't even look at the people and you just got your head down all the time? You know, what I, when I teach, I like to look at everybody who's in my audience. I look around at them. I look at their face. I look in their eyes. Some people get uncomfortable with that. 
Um, but at least if, if you're uncomfortable looking directly at people, at least gaze through the crowd so it looks like you're looking at them and addressing them. I don't have a problem with that. I like looking at the people. Uh, I like it to be more, more personal. Um, and so, you know, those are things you got to work on. So you got to work on your bad mannerisms and, and, and things like this. There's one preacher I was watching, um, just happened to be a lady preacher. I've watched her messages a few times. And uh, the, the, each time I've watched her, um, what has happened is she wears a mic like what I've got on right now, headset. But what she wears is she wears these big earrings, okay? And as she's moving around preaching, her earring is smacking on the microphone. And you can hear it all throughout her message, that earring constantly hitting that microphone. And they haven't corrected the problem each time I listen to it. Now, that's an annoying distraction, and it makes it hard to listen to the message. The message is great, but that's such a distraction and it pulls away from it. So we want to work on getting away from all those bad mannerisms, okay? There's another preacher that I, I see on TV and, and you know, he, he's preaching and he's trying to preach loud and that, but man, every two minutes, he's <clears throat> all, all throughout the message. And every, me and every time he preaches, it's, it's, it's like that. So... Maybe if he's straining his throat too much where he has to do that, well, maybe he needs to tone it down a little bit and get the, the sound guys to put the volume up a little bit more or something. But that is something that needs to, that needs to change, you know, because it becomes distracting, okay? And it can take away from your message. So again, practicing, uh, looking in front of the mirror, recording yourself, all this stuff is going to help you to see and notice the bad things that you do, okay? And you may get rid of some and then you may develop some again. Okay. And then you're going to have to work on getting rid of those. So uh, just constantly be aware of the things that you're doing. I still have things that I'm working on that I don't like that I'm doing. Once in a while, I see something pop up. I'm like, where did that come from? And then I got to work on trying to get that out. Okay. All right. Now his preaching. So we had his appearance. So we had the 10 characteristics, the great preacher, B, his appearance, C, his preaching. Okay, and this is the last section before we're going to close out today, okay? So see his preaching. The preacher needs to be aware of his voice, the level of his voice, the tone of his voice, the fluctuation of his voice, etc. Listen to yourself on tape or video and ask yourself if there's anything you need to change. Okay, now tape or video, most of you are probably, like, what's tape? <laughs> okay, so it shows how old uh, this lesson was. But, you know, you're going to watch yourself on media, whether you put yourself on media or whatever, or what, camera or your phone, whatever it is, however you recorded yourself, but record yourself so you can see. And then you can see if there's anything you have to change. Am I too boring behind the pulpit? Is my energy level too low? Am I not showing expression? Am I not showing passion? Does it, th th does it look like I believe what I'm saying or not? Um, and it's not an act. It's not a performance. But you, you do, it does help with the presentation of your message because that's a big part of your message is your presentation. So if you're going to be asleep in the pulpit and just be all calm and monotone, and then your people are going to be falling asleep. And so... You need to watch for those things. So I need more energy. Do I need to fluctuate my voice too much? Am I only speaking at one level all the time? Do I need to tone it down at points and just talk to the people? And then when those high points come and something good is coming, then I, and then I show that energy, I get my voice up, okay? Uh, when I want to make a point in that. So you got to work on those things, okay? And then the preacher needs to be aware of his vocabulary and his grammar, okay? Of course, some people are going to be better at this than others. Uh, you don't want to speak over the people's heads. So if you've got a very strong vocabulary, okay, wide range, you know a lot of words and deep words and stuff, uh, you probably don't want to use those words all the time. And if you do use a big word, then you've also got to explain that word. Because the most important thing about preaching is that all people understand. I think I shared this with you guys in one of the previous lessons, but when I heard the call of God, and him calling me to teach his word, when he called me, he said, make it clear so that all can understand. And so no matter the age group, no matter the education level, uh, they could understand what I'm saying. It has to be clear and understandable. 
Because that's what God wants. God wants his people to understand his word. And so if they don't understand what we're saying, what's the whole point, right? So it has to be um, spoken in a level that all people can understand. So you don't want to speak over their heads. Um, and then also try to use proper grammar, okay? You know, we all make that mistake sometimes, okay? But, but we do our best to do it, okay? And again, also be aware of your mannerisms in the pulpit. Um, and then here, um, my professor, William Say, he said this, the most impressive method of preaching is preaching without notes, okay? If you're a person, again, who has great recall, okay, your mind works that way, um, you know, also leading of the Holy Spirit, um, if you can preach without notes, you know, that's great, because it is impressive if someone can just talk and preach without notes, but make sure if you do that, that you can stay on topic and that you're just not going with whatever comes on the top of your mind. Because if you just come with whatever comes, the next thought, the next thought, and it, you could be going on rabbit trails and then the next thing you know, the people are lost. So if you can't keep it on topic and to keep focused on that theme, it's probably better not. It's better to have some kind of outline to keep you on track. Okay, but um, you know it's 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 uh, if you can do it, it's it's great. Or if you can use more of a basic outline. The thing is, even if you use manuscript style like I do, don't just re stand there and read that sermon. Use it as reference still. Okay, like I like I told you, I have a couple of reasons why I do manuscript style because I plan on putting those things into print, and so I kind of kill two birds with one stone. I have my outline, but I also have that all prepared for when I want to put it in print. But I don't stand there and just read it, okay, to the people. I'll reference quotes. I'll go to it for my scriptures. I'll see the parts that I underlined, which are those high points. And then when I see that high point, it, 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 it gets my memory going on what I want to say. It triggers my memory on what I want to say about that point. So I look down at it. I see that point. And then each time I glance down at it, I see what's next. I see the order of where I'm going. I see where I'm going, okay? But you just don't stand there with your face in the pulpit, okay? So you have to get used to it. Of just glancing at it here and there, using it. If you have a quote you want to use, or I use manuscript style too because sometimes there's really important points I want to get through to people, and I have it down in a certain way. And if I just do it off the top of my head, I may not get that point through the way I wanted to. Okay, so this is why I'll have it written down and, I'll, and sometimes I'll read that important point, okay? So, you know, there's differences. Again, um, it's all about you, okay? But you always want to, you want to be looking at the people, okay? That's something that you want to practice. You want to have eye contact with them. And so this is going to vary with styles, Okay, and depending on what time type of preacher you are, okay. Now, there's some people who preach without out uh, notes, and I've noticed, but the message is very, very simple, okay, which makes it really easy. And the sermon is made up more of stories. They'll have a maybe they'll say a little principle, but then they go on in a big story. They finish that story, maybe a principle, and then they go on with another story. So the sermon is content is made up of stories, okay, rather than exegesis, like spiritual truth and Bible study and truths that you're wanting to bring out. It's a very simple message, you know, and of course, and then it's short, it's like 20, 25 minutes, and so it's, it's easier to preach without the notes that way, okay? But if you're doing uh, some serious study and you're bringing out a lot of information, then you're probably going to need some kind of outline to help you out, because if you got a lot of information there, it's going to be hard to remember a lot of that stuff, okay? So just remember those things, okay? Those things will, um, those things will help you, and some of these things we're going to talk about a little bit more in some of the other lessons as we get into the final lessons um, in the next study. And the next time we meet next Saturday, we'll go through the rest of this, and uh, we'll finish out this course.